Stephanie Baker is a senior coach, account leader, and leads the emergency services division for Studer Group. She is the author of the book, Excellence in the Emergency Department, How to Get Results, and has over 20 years of clinical and administrative experience in emergency medicine. Please welcome Stephanie Baker. Hi. Are you guys awake still? Everybody's still out there? All right, great. Well, we're excited to be here. Actually, um, May 16th was my 25th year as an emergency department nurse. So that's a really great opportunity. So a couple of things I'm going to talk to you all about. I can say because I am an ED nurse, all right? So I can say that with confidence and give you some credibility around that to really help us. No ED left behind. Simple concept, right? Nobody wants their ED left behind. But how do we really make it happen? With all we're facing every day, all of those millions of patients we're seeing across the country every single year, it doesn't get easier. Our aging workforce, the ability not always to replace all of those positions that we have. It gets harder and harder, but you know what? We've got folks right in this room that are getting it done. World-class EDs will begin to lead and lean forward and not follow. But first, let's start. Let's take an instant poll. If you have had an emergency department visit yourself or someone close to you that you love, in the last two years, please stand to your feet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, we'll show you those stats in a minute. Lots of visits in the emergency department. So stay standing, stay standing. So here's what I want you to think about. That visit, how did it go? Did we see you in a timely manner? Did we take care of you and give you information and keep you informed? Did we meet your needs? Did we leave you sitting in a waiting room for a long time? What happened? And only if, and those of you sitting, take a look at what happens. Only if you would rate that experience excellent and you would return to that emergency department tomorrow if you had a choice, remain standing. Otherwise, sit down. All right, so two things on that. One is, it shows we're doing a lot of things right. Many of you remain standing. The second is, we're not done, and there's work to be done. So thanks, have a seat. Look at this data. If we look at the CDC this year, we're gonna close out, we closed out 2010 at 124 million visits. ED folks in the room, do you feel it? <laughs> That is 222 visits a minute. By the time my 10 minutes is done, 2,200 people in America will have had an emergency department visit and be able to go out and share that positively or to say, oh my gosh, try somewhere else. Don't go back there. So as we don't uh, think about what the things we have to do, what we can't do is let those word of mouth referrals go out and tell folks that we're not the best. So look at the amount of EDs that have closed. During the same time, between 95 and 2010, our EDs that are able to serve those 124 million a year, getting less. Again, ED folks in the room, we feel it. So we know there's a pressure, there's all of that. The CDC expects in the next five years that ED volumes will grow 5% a year for the next five years. So not gonna get better, so what do we do to solve it? What do we do to solve those issues as 7% of our emergency departments have continued to close for the last 15 years at that period of time? This is a busy slide, but let me just get it down to a couple of things for you. Think about yourselves, those of you that stood up, what do you want when you come to an emergency department? We had to boil it down to the simple things of the path of the patient. When a patient arrives, they want to be treated quickly, triaged, treated with courtesy and respect, made to feel important, not made to feel like an inconvenience. They want to be able to see someone in a timely manner. And when we think about it, here's the tip for that. If you today are not using an expedited triage process, you got to take this on. If, if on average it takes six minutes for your nurse to triage the patient, and your patient number 10, you're waiting an hour to be seen. 
And what if that's with your mild indigestion that you think you have and we're losing your heart muscle? So we've got to do it. We've got to be able to do that expedited triage, which is what? Name, date of birth, social security number, your chief complaint, and a full set of vital signs. If you are doing more at triage, you are not doing to sort, which is what the French word is. You're doing too much, and the patient standing behind them could have a bad outcome. So very important with the triage. Immediate bedding. We go to EDs all the time. They say, absolutely, if the beds are open, Steph, we're, we're putting patients right in it. One opportunity to look at there from 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. Because I work 12 years a night. <laughs> and by 3 a.m., you're just happy to maybe take a break, go to the bathroom. Things settle down. You want to be able to do that. But that's where we lose time. If you want to improve your door to dock time, that's an opportunity. Patients are there between 3 a.m. and 9 a.m. Get them quickly into your emergency department. Let them be seen by a doctor. It helps your overall door to dock time, helps your overall turnaround time for the emergency department. Hourly rounding in the reception area. Now, how many of you just love to do this? <laughs> Right? The first time I told my staff, the last ED I turned around before I started coaching almost seven years ago, and I said, okay, guys, and we were in an underserved area, and it was scary out there on a Saturday night. And I said, we're going to go out, and we're going to start doing hourly rounds and keep these people informed. And what do you think they said? I'll give you verbatim what they said. They said, no, we ain't, because they'll kill us <laughs> if we go out there and do that. But they wanted to kill us because they'd been sitting out there for so long and didn't know anything. Hourly round saves lives. It helps people get connected. It reduces our left without being seen. And it creates a culture of accountability. So you got to do it, guys. Your, your staff can help. Your, my security officers helped. we got to do hourly rounds. So I make it back. I get to a bed. How do we create that great experience when I'm in the middle? The doc sees me. We want those docs to see us. As much as we may think as an ED nurse it's about us, it's about the provider. The best practice hospitals, many of which are in this room, from the time the patients arrive until they're seen by a doc, it's 30 minutes or less. So making sure that we're able to do that. Aid it in keywords, so important with that. When that doc makes the connection, I love it when they say, you know, for your privacy, I want to make sure that I give you a moment here. Let me pull the curtain. Aid and keywords are not to be underestimated. If they go to a hospital they think is good, the quality is there, that's not what they rate your care on. It's how do you connect with me? What did you say to me? Are you going to come back? And as we close, important for those providers to do the formal close. I've been a needy nurse a long time. I can go in and say the same thing to the patient, and what do they say to me? Can I talk to Dr. Jones again? So ED docs in the room, we love you, but it's so, so important for you to do that formal close with those patients. So these things, they seem simple. We understand that they're not. It can't just happen when you're busy. And when you're not busy, it's got to happen all the time. Bob really connected to the mandatory. And we got to do some things, guys. We got to face our flow. We got to face that flow issue. We got to step forward because when we do, it creates that ability for us to see patients more quickly. It improves the clinical quality of care. We got to leverage our staff. We need to reward those folks who every day of their life, for many of them, that entire career has been emergency medicine. We've got to coach those who need improvement, and frankly, we've got to deal with those low performers because you can't afford not to. Your patient lives every day are depending on it. And I always like to do the math. I had a low performer that was being pretty ugly to our patients. They said, oh, just she, you can't talk to her before noon. I said, well, that's a problem. She triages 50 people before noon. And when I really did the math, she herself was responsible for over 5,000 encounters in that emergency department every year. I had a leader say to me, what will I do? How will I restaff this if I don't let this person go? I said, what are you going to do if they stay? What about all your other folks that it's infecting? So we got to be strong. We got to have courage. But ED folks, we got a lot of courage, and we can do these things. We got to bring it back to, to values. Every patient deserves high quality care every time. ED providers make a difference every single day. 
in the lives of the patients that they see. It's not just a, I've never had a job. It's always been a calling. We must be relentlessly committed to saving lives and restoring health every single day. And remember, by putting these evidence-based practices into place someday, the life you save may be your very own or someone that you certainly, certainly care about. I did 18 years of life flight out of my 25. I live in San Diego. We have seven trauma centers. So if I'm in the city, it takes about eight minutes. And I got to tell you, I've picked up hundreds of patients that I was the last eight minutes. Last person to help them die with dignity. Last person to carry their messages that they wanted to to their families. Last person to manage their pain. And here's what I know, there are no bad days. No ED can be left behind. Let's lean forward, thanks.